What's going on everybody? My name is Taylor DeYoung, and my wife and I recently put out a video of a pool that we built in our backyard. Uh, we received hundreds of questions about that project, uh, how we decided to do some of the things that we did, why we chose to do some of the things that we did, construction, parts, etc. So I've decided to put together a video that kind of details some of that stuff, helps provide a little bit of insight behind uh, some of our decisions. Um, and again, there's a parts list. Uh, there's gonna be some sketches included. Hopefully that stuff is helpful for anybody that is looking to construct something similar um, or anybody that's looking to tackle a project uh, that you know is related to an above ground pool, more or less. So let's get into it. When I started this project, I looked online for videos and guides uh, just to kind of help kickstart the process, help me decide what type of pool is the right pool for me. And I was actually, I struggled to find any of those videos. So for the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna dedicate some time to that process. Hopefully that'll be helpful for anybody who is, again, in the beginning stages of this and is looking for maybe some of the do's or don'ts or maybe some of like the pros or cons of various pool types. So if you're not interested in any of that, Go ahead and uh, skip ahead. There are chapter markers down below. You can head further into the video where we get into some of the details specifically about our project. I really wanted to highlight a couple of our goals going into this project. One of the things is the cost. We really wanted to keep things to a minimum. This house that we're in right now, this is not a forever home. So we didn't want to make an investment that we were going to feel bad if we left in a few years or if the new owners didn't want it, et cetera. So we wanted something that we were going to enjoy for the short term, but wasn't necessarily a commitment long term. So the financial commitment was a really big factor for us. Uh, the second piece was we wanted something that looked good. Uh, we spent a lot of time in our backyard. It's one of our favorite parts of the home. And we wanted something that wasn't like fully exposed with hoses and electronics and pumps and filters and all that. We wanted that stuff contained and we wanted it to look nice. We wanted to be able to enjoy it aesthetically. So that was important. And another thing was the maintenance factor. We wanted something that we felt confident that we could maintain. It wasn't overly complex. It, was, it wasn't going to require, uh, you know, a pool guy or, you know, experts in those areas or whatever. Like we, we wanted this to truly be something that was DIY from the ground up. And that's not to say that we weren't willing to make mistakes and learn along the way. You obviously have to figure out like pool chemistry and all that kind of stuff. That's going to be a part of it no matter what. But we really wanted something that we felt like we could uh, tackle on our own. So those were a couple of our goals going into it. I'll explain, you know, again, how we were able to accomplish those and achieve those, but just remember those things. I've gotten a lot of comments about, you know, people saying, oh, well, you know, you really bought a cheap pool or you overspent on, you know, the deck or it doesn't mean like, why would you do, why would you do all this work for something so cheap? And I just, I think people don't have a clear understanding necessarily of what some of our goals were. So hopefully that context provides uh, some clarity around why we decided to do some of the things that we decided to do. Um, <clears throat> which kind of brings me to the next point, which is kind of the budget. A lot of people ask about budget. This pool took us a little bit of time to build. Obviously, we lost track of exactly what it cost. I did not save every single receipt, but it essentially came out to around $6,000, give or take. Uh, there, are, there are things that you could certainly scale back on if you wanted to cut costs or decrease costs, that's for sure. And if you wanted to, you know, go further in, uh, you could certainly go further in and spend, you know, north of that, no, no problem. Uh, and I can obviously give you some uh, some tips on how to do that uh, if that's something that you're looking for. But that the budget is a big piece of it, and that's ultimately where we were at. Um, in our area, I live in Maryland, and we looked at... Uh, joining a pool, for example, we th we thought about doing that, and it's about fifteen hundred bucks a season, give or take. There are some that maybe are a little bit cheaper, some that are way more expensive than that, but fifteen hundred seemed to be a reasonable number. So, you know, if you spend six thousand dollars on the pool project, and you know, let's say we are here for another four years, another four seasons at a pool, it kind of all nets out. And obviously, there's a benefit of having it be a private pool, it's your own pool, it's in your backyard, you don't have to deal with families and kids, etc. It's kind of your own thing. So, obviously, there's like you know the pro of that. Uh, so we felt like it was a worthy investment and hopefully everybody can understand that. So the stock tank pool is what inspired us to actually kick this project off. 
Uh, those are like galvanized metal pools. They're kind of like large kiddie pools is what they look like. They're a little bit more adult than that. I've seen them like powder coated in different colors. They have filters. They have, um, you know, pumps and stuff like that. Like there's all kinds of things you can do with them. I've seen people put them in gardens. I've seen people put them, you know, in decks. And there's all kinds of options when you're doing a stock, a stock tank pool. But one of the big cons to a stock tank is the temperature of the water. So if you look at the FA of a lot of stock tank companies, you will see that they recommend that those pools not be in direct sunlight. They need to be shaded for most of the day. If you can't, you know, you need to provide shade for them, put up an umbrella, etc. Uh, and they need to be drained on a pretty consistent basis because the water is just going to get really warm if it just sits in there day after day. And so that type of maintenance was something that we weren't really looking for. We wanted something truthfully that was going to remain cool uh, throughout the season without us having to constantly, you know, empty and fill it and all that kind of stuff. And, and we wanted to filter it and have a salt water system and all that kind of stuff. So the stock tank pool really just didn't want, it just wound up not being the right thing for us. Um, and they're also small, right? So they're not huge. You can't really stand up in them. You kind of got to lay down or sit in them and you can't put a lot of people in them. So there's a couple of drawbacks to the stock tank. I have nothing against them though. I mean, if, if you have the right environment for it, if you have a small space, if it's just you and somebody else and you're just looking for something simple, Simple that you can sit in and you don't mind emptying it on a regular basis. I think that there's nothing wrong with the stock tank, but that's ultimately why we chose not to go with that. Uh, beyond the stock tank, we looked at the mod pools. This is another thing that you're going to see a lot on Instagram. Uh, these are uh, shipping container style pools. These are This is a much bigger commitment. These are much larger, typically speaking, than obviously a stock tank. This is going to be significantly more expensive uh, than the stock tank. I didn't mention earlier, stock tank pools are not, they're pretty inexpensive. They're pretty cheap. There's not, I think, you know, a thousand bucks and you can probably get yourself into a stock tank pool. But the mod, the mod, uh, mod pools are, I have seen them 50, $60,000 and up. I'm not aware of any that were cheaper than that. They might exist. I don't know. Um, every time that they post something online, I check the comments and a lot of people are in there asking about pricing. And Mod Pools directs everybody to their online calculator. They are not providing any prices about any of the videos that they put online. I find that a little frustrating and irritating. They obviously know what it costs. Just put it in there. And the truth is, it's super expensive, which is why they don't want to put it in there. Sometimes people will do the math on it and they'll put it in the comments and they'll let you know. But those are like 50, 60 and up. Um, and reason being is because it's a pretty complex project. You have to have a crane system come in. You have to have a team of guys. You have to excavate in most cases. You can put mod pools just as like an above ground pool. You can put them on a slab or put them, you know, in a yard or something. You can certainly do that. But in either case, it is not a simple DIY project that involves a lot of stuff. Uh, and I think that that's why they're super expensive. Probably. I'm not sure. Um, there's also an aesthetic component too. I think you really have to like the look of a mod pool. I think they're kind of cool, but it's a very modern looking thing. I don't know what their longevity is. I think it's a relatively new company, so I don't know what a mod pool looks like in 10 years, 15 years. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe somebody can say something in the comments about that, but I I'm not 100% sold on the mod pools. I think that they're cool, but in either case, um, we investigated it. We chose not to go with it. The next thing that we looked at was fiberglass pools. Uh, that seems to be, and I don't know, I'm not a pool expert. It seems to me that fiberglass pools are a little bit more of like a recent thing. The last like decade or so, they've really kind of risen in popularity. Um, smaller size fiberglass pools are certainly a certainly a little bit more popular from what I've seen online. Uh, same deal. These are not super inexpensive. Uh, these can be, again, in my experience with what I tracked down online, same thing, 50, 60, that's, that's starting. Um, cause again, you have to have a crane and you have to excavate and it requires a team of people. And there's just a lot of parts involved in getting that like installed. Again, it's probably a much like the experience of it. Like after the fact, I'm sure it's like a really nice product. I'm sure the manufacturing is great. I'm sure like, I'm sure all that stuff is awesome. So it's not to say that it's not a good option. Um, it's not that it's just not really a DIY option. That's my opinion. It's just not really a DIY, uh, DIY thing. Uh, last, last but not least, you're probably not interested in this because obviously you're on a video about DIY above ground pools, but the in-ground pool. So I'm in Maryland and in-ground pools are insanely expensive. 
um, talk to a couple of companies about in-ground pools. They're like a hundred thousand uh, dollars, give or take, depending on you know size and shape and the landscaping and all of that. Uh, but again, same thing. It's not a DIY project. It's super expensive. I don't recommend it unless you're really like if you're in your forever home and you want to just you know do something nice and go all in. Hell yeah, I say do the in-ground pool. Don't you know? Don't get caught up on it. But if you're looking for something short term, it's not really the right solution. Ultimately, we landed on the Intex pool. Uh, it's an XTR model. The reason why, a couple. One, it's super inexpensive and it truly is a DIY product. You can order this and it comes in a kit and it gives you everything that you need to kind of get kickstarted outside of the salt. So if you get like a salt water system, for example, you would have to go get the salt. But other than that, you can really just get this dropped off at your house and you can kind of be up and running within a day if you want to. So it really seemed like a good starting point for us because again, it accomplished that, that key goal of cost. We would not, it's not like it's inexpensive or free, but if we had to scrap it in a couple of years, we felt like, okay, like it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. A couple of quick things before we walk around the pool. Uh, there is a concrete pad beneath this pool. So we actually used to have a garage in this location before we bought the house. Uh, there was a garage here, it was torn down and we were left with a concrete pad. And for many years, it just sat kind of vacant and we weren't really sure what to do with it. And we elected to go ahead and try this DIY pool project and putting uh, to, and put and basically put that on top of the concrete pad. So that is a lot of people who have scrolled through the comments and Instagram. Uh, they saw my six thousand dollar price quote for actually this project and constructing all of this. That is true. Uh, aside from the fact that we did not have to pour concrete, now you don't have to pour concrete to put an above ground pool like this up, but it is recommended. So. Um, if you don't have a concrete pad and you want to get a concrete pad, those prices are going to vary drastically depending on where you live. We were quoted everything from $3,000 to $10,000 to have a concrete pad of this size put down because originally we were thinking about putting this in a different area of the yard, uh, but ultimately just went with the concrete pad that we had. But if you are going to put in a concrete pad and you want to build something similar to this, I would go ahead and just tack on an additional 3000 plus uh, to that $6,000 price tag. Uh, just again, depending on where you are too. I've, I've heard of some people getting quotes for a lot less in different areas, but again, I'm in Maryland and that's just what they were quoting us at the time when we looked at getting this done. So I just wanted to clarify something real quick. You don't have to put these pools on a concrete pad. We chose to do that because we heard from some others that they had a better experience with that. And we also happen to have an, a, a concrete pad uh, that was available at the time. So we went ahead and did that. But really the thing that distresses the most here in this setup guide is that being absolutely flat and level, uh, there are some grasses and there are some types of surfaces that it recommends that you don't set this up on, uh, like mud, sand, softer, loose soil, that kind of thing. Um, it recommends that you don't put this on a balcony or a platform that could collapse under the weight. Obviously, these are going to be very heavy when they're full. So don't think that you have to have a concrete pad or if you don't have that, it's going to be problematic for you. Uh, it, it, like I said, it's not a requirement. It's just something that we did. So a few more things about the design. Because it actually all sits on a concrete pad, the posts... Uh, do not go into the ground. The posts are not like cemented in. They are not, we did not dig down and bury posts or anything like that. This is basically one big box and frame that more or less just sits on top of the concrete pad. There are some areas of the frame where we did bolt them down or bolt it down to the concrete just to kind of help stabilize things as we built it. But this is more or less just sitting on top of the concrete pad. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Uh, I can't imagine unless like a major flood or something were to occur. I don't think it's going to move, but uh, just as a heads up, like from a design, uh, from, from like a design perspective, that is something that's kind of unique about it is it really is kind of the idea of a container pool, but just expanded um, kind of beyond that. It really is just kind of free, uh, freestanding. So what we'll do. Um, we'll go ahead and I'm going to walk around the pool a little bit and we'll talk about some of the different aspects of it. Again, I'm going to highlight some areas that I've received a lot of questions about specifically. So the first thing is going to be uh, the pump and filter. So this pool is 
uh, a salt water pool. It is filtered. And if we actually go around to the back side of the pool, that's where all that stuff is housed. So if you look back here, um, there's a couple of storage areas. We have some pool stuff here on the right. Uh, but under here is where you'll actually find the pump and the filter and the salt water system. It's actually all basically underneath the sunbed and the stairs here. All right, so let's talk uh, briefly about the pump and filter system. Now, the pump and filter system that we're looking at right here, this is not the model that came included with the kit from the manufacturer. This is actually an upgraded pump. So the one that came with the pool is rated for 1,500 gallons per hour, uh, which size-wise, according to their specs, does align with this pool model. But we had heard from a lot of other users that uh, upgrading the pumps was highly recommended, that the user experience was much better. So we went ahead and did that out of the gate. We actually never even unboxed the uh, pump that came with the kit. We just went straight for the bigger pump. Now this one is rated for 8,500 gallons. I'll put all the model numbers on the screen so you guys can check those out. But this one is uh, significantly larger. Uh, it's not necessarily oversized. If you look at the pools that it is rated for, they're actually, uh, this one is actually rated for the same exact size pool as the 1,500 gallon per hour pump. It's just a larger, more capable pump in my opinion. Uh, and then one of the big differences outside of this being just, uh, again, more capable and being able to move more water is it uses a larger hose size. So Intex actually uses two different hose sizes. They use an uh, inch and a half, uh, which is what we're looking at right now. It's a little bit of this. It's like the larger white uh, hose. And then they also use, I think it's like an inch. Uh, maybe it's a little bit smaller than that. Um, it's what they use with the smaller pumps. It looks like this. So you can see... Again, a much different size uh, hose, but this is what you'll get with the smaller pumps, or sometimes you'll get this with the kit. Uh, and with uh, the smaller hose on the uh, smaller pools and the smaller pumps, obviously you'll have smaller connection points on the pool itself, but uh, Intex does make a conversion kit that allows you to basically uh, convert the smaller inlet and outlet openings to the inch and a half hose so you can move between the two. We've not had any problems with water flow or pressure. It's been, uh, it's been really, really great. I can't imagine using a smaller pump than this, to be honest. This, uh, this moves water, at, like in my opinion, at the right rate, and it allows us to use accessories like the skimmer, which we'll talk about later. Uh, and, you know, other pool accessories, too, if you want to use, um, like, a pool cleaner or something like that, like one of the little robotic pool cleaners or something like that for the bottom. Having a larger pump is, is more or less a necessity in those situations. All right, so what we'll do real quick, I'm going to kind of explain the routing of some of the pipes and hoses. Um, again, this is not something uncommon. A lot of people have done this where they've done some plumbing rather than just do hoses the whole way. We moved the filter and the pump further away from the inland outlet of the pool. So we needed to do a little bit of plumbing uh, in between. You'll see down at the end, uh, you'll see hose right here that connects from the pool down to our PVC. That's required. Again, the pool is not a solid structure. It has some give to it. So you can't uh, plumb directly to it. Otherwise, you'll create too much strain on the liner. So you got to have something in between that is a little bit more pliable, a little bit more flexible. So we have the hose running down to the PVC pipe, and the PVC pipe obviously runs a little bit further down here uh, to our pump and filter. Now, in between, we have shutoff valves. There's one right there, one right there, uh, again, for the inlet and outlet. Uh, they do make shutoff valves. Intex has a shutoff valve. Uh, component that connects directly at the inlet and outlet. It's a little like plunger system that they have. We elected to do these down here just because the other ones are not super accessible. If we want to clean the basket or the filter or something, it's just way easier to shut these off. And then we can do all the pump maintenance that we need to do. 
One of the frustrating things about the Intex hose uh, and system is that it uses basically a non-standard size. So you're gonna have to get adapters if you wanna connect your uh, Intex hoses or fittings to standard PVC. So you can get online on Amazon. I'm sure there's other marketplaces you can get it to, but basically these are conversion kits. You see, they kind of come with everything that you need, uh, but these conversion kits essentially allow you to convert over from the hose to a standard PVC fitting. So now that everything's converted over, obviously we have uh, our water coming in from the pool. It's going into the pump here, and then the pump into the sand filter. The sand filter goes into the chlorinator, which is here in the back right there, and then obviously that goes back out to the pool. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the pump and the pump settings, but you can see here underneath this little door, you have your pump settings. A timer, chlorinator, uh, boost function, self-clean. There's a couple of alarm uh, lights over here if you don't have enough uh, water flow or something like that, or if pressure is building up. Uh, but the user guide will explain that way better. Intex also has some really great user guide videos on their website that you can check out that explains all of that. As for electrical, we have uh, two outlets here. The one on the left is gonna be for our uh, pump and filter. And then the one on the right is for the pool light. It's the Intex pool light. We'll talk a little bit about that later in the video. You'll get to check that out. A couple of different aspects to the top of the, uh, or to this side of the pool, to the deck here. We have the day bed on this side. Um, the daybed exists for a couple of reasons. One, obviously it's like nice and convenient to have a daybed, but more importantly, we wanted to have an area for the pump and the filter, but we also wanted some storage. So if you actually go under here, there is some storage where you can see uh, we have some pool floats and things like that. You also have pretty good access to the plumbing should you need to get uh, get to any of it. It's not the most convenient thing to crawl in there, but you can certainly do that if you want. And you can kind of reach around the corner there and you have pretty good access to the inlet and outlet connections of the pool. Um, on top of the daybed, there is this pad. This is actually a pretty nice pad. Uh, we got this from Amazon. Uh, you can custom order. This is a very weird size daybed. It is not like a standard size at all. So we custom ordered the daybed cushion from Amazon. It took about a week to get, and it's great. Um, they do rate it outdoor, but it does fill up with water pretty easily. I don't know how outdoor, uh, you know, I don't know how well it's made for the outdoors, so I would recommend probably taking it in if you do something like that. Up next to the day bed, there is a little uh, out, like a little cut out here. You can actually like store stuff. We have uh, sunscreen and stuff in there, but you put your phone in there, a book in there, sunglasses, that kind of thing. Um, honestly, a lot of those decisions were kind of made as we were building the deck. It's not like we have like designs for that stuff specifically. We just kind of made it up as we were going along. Um, just thought it would be a good idea. Uh, these panels here, a lot of people have asked about these panels. So you can kind of get a visual of what these look like, how they're kind of constructed. So this is actually fencing. Um, I've cut it down and trimmed it to kind of make it fit our needs here and our purposes here, but this is weather treated. Uh, it was, you know, we dried it for a long time, then we stained it. So these sections just overlap on one another. Um, there's a screw in on each end, on that end and on this end. If you need to pop these off, they actually come out pretty easily. You just take out the screws, then these actually just slide right out. That would give you access to the side of the pool. If you needed to get access to the side of the pool, we've not needed to do anything with the side of the pool just yet, so haven't had to take them off, but um, it's worked really well for our needs. I got a lot of questions, interestingly enough, about this uh, set, this like little couch and two chair coffee table set. Uh, I purchased that uh, from Home Depot. It was like four or 500 bucks. And there's actually, uh, you can buy it from Walmart. You can buy it on Amazon. There's a, it's not like a Home Depot exclusive or anything like that. Um, it is, I don't made it very highly. This was actually something that we had indoors for a while in a sunroom. And then this season we decided to, to move it out here. Didn't need it inside anymore. And it's actually kind of deteriorated a little bit uh, quicker than I'd anticipated. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and restain or repaint some of the furniture just to kind of help it last a little bit longer. Uh, a lot of that stuff is kind of starting to fade and uh, kind of start to break apart. Um, so not the nicest set. I know it looks really good. People will have commented that it looks great, but um, it's probably not all that well made. And the cushions, 
Uh, the cushions are about as thin as cushions can get. Very, very thin, so they're not that comfortable. And they hold water like sponges, uh, and they take forever to dry out. So same kind of thing um, with the day bed. Like, if you want these things to be good to go um, on short notice, you really need to be storing them inside. Otherwise, it will take a super long time for them to dry out. All right, so some more about the design. Um, I screwed up on the stairs a little bit. They are not equal distant from one another. That was a, my bad. I screwed up on some math, so that's not ideal, but it is what it is. It works, it's okay, but it is a mistake. Um, so the stairs and the daybed, that was something that we kind of knew that we wanted to build uh, alongside the pool, like the pool frame and the pool housing and everything. We kind of wanted those components. We didn't want to do like the traditional ladder system just over the side. We really wanted to have something that was a little bit nicer. So we kind of envisioned that early on and then decided, well, if we're going to do that, might as well just include this lower section of deck just to kind of tie it all together and keep it a little bit cleaner. Uh, I mean, it's also, you know, it's better looking than just having like exposed concrete down there. So that's really why that section of deck even exists is just for uniformity. A couple of quick notes about the design for the pool uh, housing, if you will. I had a lot of people talk about this, um, like the deck component to this, right? Like, why is there a deck here on the top? So I can get my camera to go down. So there's these like deck slats. Um, the only reason that these deck slats exist and this width exists here is because the lower, like the bottom of the pool is wider than the top of the pool. It actually narrows as it comes up because it's all like resistance based. So um, you actually have to build this out to make room for the, basically the pool at the bottom. So if you were to pull these panels up and look straight down, you would actually see the walls of the pool come out uh, and they kind of meet up with the bottom side of the far wall here. So that's really the only reason that these exist. So anyway, the walkways around the top of the pool here are more necessity um, than anything else. It wasn't something that we wanted necessarily to have like this like deck thing up top. It's just, we had to have it just based on the design. If, if we could have these smaller, uh, we certainly would do that. Um, and a lot of people, you know, are gonna probably point out the fact that it seems really risky. There's no handrail on this side. And that is true. There's definitely no handrail right there. Um, we actually have a plan to put uh, planters along the edge here, basically to get some like greenery and stuff in there. We have a couple of small ones in the corners right now, but the idea is to kind of close some of that off, um, so, you know, with, with plants and pots and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more visually uh, appealing and not as dangerous. Um, again, we're not, it's just my wife and I, we don't have kids or anything. so. We're pretty good with it. Um, and, you know, we have a couple of dogs, but they don't really mess around up there too much. So we'll, we're going to do that at some point soon just to kind of make it a little less risky. But otherwise, you have railings around the rest of the pool that kind of go all the way around. And again, like the same thing, like they, they're really there at an like a necessity for the fact that you can walk around it. It wasn't like an, it wasn't like an intentional thing. Like if we could have built this pool in a way that we didn't have to have railings up there, we probably would have done that. Um, but you have to have like these walkways more or less just based upon how the pool is designed. So um, yeah, anyway, that's why those are there. So from this side of the pool, we have a Intex skimmer right here on this side. Uh, there's actually two outlets on this pool. Uh, there is one right there, there's one right there, and then you have the inlet, which is down there on the far right side. So the inlet in the, uh, the right inlet, the one that's right there in the middle, that is just the traditional, the standard inlet, inlet that just comes with the pool. It's basically just an underwater kind of screen cap that goes on there. Um, and it basically just circulates water from about midway up. Uh, we opted to do the skimmer just because we wanted to have something that helped clean the surface of the pool. For us, it has worked really, really well. I know a lot of people have had issues with this product. Uh, and I think a lot of that stems from the pump being undersized. Uh, it does require, you know, maintenance. You've got to clean it every other day or so. If you really want it to work optimally, uh, you kind of got to be on top of that. If you're not paying attention to it, you an undersized pump, it's getting debris in there on a regular basis. It, it definitely is not going to work as well as you might want it to. 
but it's been pretty solid for us. Um, we've we've enjoyed it, and I think it works really well. I've seen a lot of people do uh, where they like cut the side of the liner and they've put in a like a traditional skimmer, um, one that kind of hangs off the other side of the pool. And uh, you know, we didn't. I, my my goal initially was to try to figure out a way to do this without cutting and damaging a liner. I've seen a lot of people again have great success with it. I'm sure that system works really really well. I'm sure it's probably better than that design there. But my goal was to just see if I could figure out a way that would work without damaging the liner first. I just wanted to see if this uh, could do the trick for us. And it's pretty cheap. I think it's like 40 bucks or something like that. So it's pretty inexpensive and does not result, obviously, in us damaging the liner at all or cutting the liner. Also, with these rectangular pools, the walls, as I said earlier, they're not vertical. They are pretty sloped. So I don't think a... Um, I don't think a third party or aftermarket skimmer would actually work on these. I don't know if you can install it because it's going to be on a pretty steep angle if you were to do it. Maybe somebody out there has done it and can provide like some examples or share that with me. Um, I'm still interested in it, but I just I don't think it's going to be the right thing for this pool. All right, on this side, um, you can see there's a ladder here. This is an aftermarket ladder. This is not the Intex ladder. It does come with a pool uh, with a ladder when you buy the pool kit. It does come with an Intex model, um, but it did it did not work obviously for what we were doing because now we have these like walkways and we have these uh, these kind of like bump outs. We needed something that could be kind of installed into a deck and hang into the pool. There's a lot of different companies that make ladders like this. So it's not the only one. Uh, this is just the one that we opted to go with. Again, we got this on Amazon, uh, and I'll put a link in the uh, description below so that you can check that out if you want to. And it's worked great for us. It's been it's been perfect. We take it out during the winter and we store it inside, um, and it's been you know it's really held up well. And then on the right over there, you can see that's the Intex light. Um, that's also been great. It's worked really well for us. Same thing we've had over a couple of seasons. Uh, also, I believe got that on Amazon, I believe, or maybe it was Walmart. I'll double check and I'll link it in the video um, description below. But that's worked really well for us. A um, couple of different colors. It's magnetic, so it just kind of like connects to a, a housing that's on the back side of the pool. They kind of just stick together. You have to have somebody help you kind of line those things up. But once you do that, it works pretty well. Um, yeah, nothing but, nothing but a good experience with that so far. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So this is uh, what the pool looks like from up top. And again, like I said, you know, we do have like the walkways around the side. It makes it really nice to clean the pool. Um, it's super helpful when you go to do that kind of thing, but we really try not to use it as like a place to congregate or anything. I mean, they're very sturdy. Uh, it, it, you certainly could have a couple of people up here if you wanted to without a problem. Uh, but we just use it more for, you know, getting access to cleaning the pool. A couple of quick things about um, the pool itself and how it actually sits inside of this. So the pool is not attached in any way, shape, or form to the deck or the housing that is built around it. The pool, honestly, is just sitting there, and this was really built more or less around the pool. Now, it wasn't literally done that way, but that was kind of the concept was if we could build this box, drop this pool in the middle of it, set it up, fill it up, and then just kind of dress it so that it looked and better and that's kind of more or less what we did here ultimately like these panels that are on the inside this is a pvc board and panel if i were to take these off um it would actually expose quite a bit underneath you could actually take the pool down fold it in collapse it drain it do all that kind of stuff um and you could replace it if you needed to but these little pvc boards actually is kind of what uh hides a little bit of the uh like the the framing of the pool makes it look a little bit cleaner but if you were to pop all those boards off which is pretty easy to do is just a couple of screws that hold them in but if you were to take all those off um you'd be exposed to basically the whole pool and uh to the frame and then that would all kind of collapse down if need be uh, you could replace the line or replace frame sections if you wanted to set everything back up put the you know, put the PVC boards back on, fill the pool back up, and then, you know, you're good to go. But they're actually um, completely disconnected from one another. So, for example, like if I stick my hand under here and grab the frame, you can actually see that this is not connected. It's floated. Like, it's just in, it's just inside of this house, more or less, and not connected. And as far as our uh, winterizing process, we, this past year, um, we drained the pool all the way, emptied it out, and then we covered the top uh, with basically a waterproof tarp just to try to keep some water and try to keep some debris out of the pool. 
And that worked really well for us. We didn't have any issues with the pool. We didn't fold it up, collapse it in, pack it away, anything like that. We literally left everything in place, um, took the skimmer out, took the ladder out, took the filter and stuff and put that stuff away. But the pool, liner, frame, all of that stuff stayed. I have seen some people winterize them, um, like chemically winterize them. And that seems a little riskier, but uh, people have had luck with it. Uh, and because it is, it is a smaller pool, draining it and filling it back up is not that big of a deal. We fill it up with the garden hose. It takes about a full day uh, to fill up, maybe eight, 10 hours, something like that. Um, and, you know, yeah. So not a big deal. A lot of people have asked about the stain color on the deck. So it is, uh, it's bare um, and it is the uh, semi-transparent cedar natural tone. That's what the bulk of the deck is stained. Every like all the walking cards, like the main deck and everything. The handrails, these in-between sections here, uh, those are stained, it's slate. It's a solid wood stain from bare. Uh, that's the two stains that we used for the deck. A lot of people have asked about those, so if that's what that's all about. Every section here with some hooks, uh, holds some pool floats. That's a little cooler right there. Um, and that's, again, that's kind of where we're at right now. This is an ongoing project. That's how I kind of feel about it. Like we're working on it all the time, I feel like, and modifying it all the time. And so again, you know, this is the first video of many, most likely. If you guys have any additional questions, uh, feel free to throw them into the, uh, you know, comments below. I'll try to get back to you, help, uh, help any way that I can. And vice versa, if you guys see anything that you feel like we could have done differently or we could have done better, um, you know, feel free to shout it out. Always interested in uh, learning and uh, improving on this uh, DIY pool project. So thanks for checking this video out and uh, talk soon. So this is probably going to be the most frustrating part for people who a lot of people have been asking about blueprints in specific designs as it relates to this project. And the, I sketch everything out on the front end. I use graph paper. That makes my life a little easier. Uh, and I go through a lot of different iterations of design before we actually begin to build anything. And so, and a lot of things change kind of on the fly. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of run through some of these papers. Uh, hopefully this will be helpful. They're kind of damaged. They've been outside a lot in the humidity and rain and stuff. But, uh, and I'll try to maybe take some high res photos so people can see them a little bit more clearly. But just so people kind of have an understanding of like the process and what I kind of went through. Um, this is like, this, and I, to be honest, I might not remember what all these are, but this is like the design of like kind of what the side would look like. Originally, we thought about maybe putting like a ladder or something or building a ladder into the side of it. This is again, very like container pool uh, style. Like the slats, you can see those there. Um, you can see where like the beams, the four by fours and stuff were the railing and whatnot. So that's kind of what one of the initial concepts was. Didn't ultimately turn out exactly like that, but you can kind of get the idea. Um, this is a version of the deck, the stairs, and then the day bed. This is a little bit further in the design process. Um, again, a little tough to see, I know. I apologize. I'm not the best at documenting this stuff. Um, but we can see the frame of the pool, the box more or less. The pool went kind of inside there. That's kind of what that looks like. These are uh, earlier versions of the design of the deck. We had the boards running this way in that direction. We obviously uh, flipped them. Um, they run the opposite direction in the final build. The stairs were a little bit different. We still had the day bed accounted for, but this was an earlier design. Same thing, design of the deck. Uh, down here, stairs, day bed. The day bed was a little bit wider at a time. You can see the top deck of the pool here. Again, we changed the design of the uh, boards in, uh, in this one. Uh, this document here, this is kind of the one that we used most in the final stages. 
Uh, this shows a little bit more of some of like the underlying design, some of how we, uh, you know, built some of the, you know, some of the framing and whatnot. This is a little bit more accurate, I think, to what we ultimately built, minus the, uh, you know, the decking boards on top. This is a little bit more accurate of the structure. So, uh, again, it's, I can't scan these in. They're a little big, but I'll try to maybe take some higher res photos. This was a plumbing sketch. Um, this just kind of showed where we were going to put the pump and filter ultimately. This helped me lay out a little bit of like just the length PVC wise. Uh, we actually flipped this around a little bit. We've made the runs a little bit shorter. We flipped the pool. So the hookups were actually on this side. So, uh, but this kind of shows a little bit of the process. You can see here, you know, where we were writing out kind of how much we needed of each thing. Um, and this actually shows here uh, the third party skimmer that we talked about possibly doing, but ultimately did not do. We bailed on that. Uh, this design shows, this is not, in, this is not super accurate. This actually changed a little bit in the end. Um, but this was originally kind of some of the concept of, uh, the top walk weight piece, how this was ultimately designed. Uh, it's, it, the final product was similar to this, but we needed to, uh, build it out a little bit further, make it a little bit more stable, a little bit more secure. Uh, this wound up not being uh, the most stable. So we we did some re-engineering on that. Um, but you can kind of get the idea of how it was kind of intended to be more of an overhang, uh, more like decorative almost to kind of just cover the sides of the pool. But again, we figured people would probably walk up there. So we had to, you know, redesign that, re-engineer it a little bit so that it was more uh, reliable. This was a little bit more of a layout of where, uh, some of the posts were going in the beginning. Some of the original designs, we actually had the pool shifted, uh, much further down and we were going to put a, uh, a deck, like an actual deck up top up high, uh, pool level. But we decided to actually ultimately center the pool, uh, and not do the deck up top. We did the deck on the side, obviously. So that's kind of another one of the earlier designs. Again, probably not super helpful, but maybe it uh, can give you some, uh, I don't know, some creative food for thought kind of thing. Maybe you'll decide to do something like that. Um, another question that I get asked all of the time, this is actually probably the most popular question for whatever reason, is the stain that we used on the pool, or on the decks rather. So the deck uh, is this semi-transparent cedar stain. This is a bare product. Uh, we did semi-transparent for uh, basically the deck, the sidings, all of that. And it's the uh, semi-transparent cedar. This is the actual uh, label here. So you can take that to Home Depot if you'd like. And then the railings, uh, the railings are different, obviously. Uh, they are a solid stain. Slate is the color, also a bare product. Uh, but you can see here, this is the uh, solid color, lasts a little bit longer. So they say, uh, we'll find out, but yeah. So those are the two stains that we use for the deck. Uh, and again, if you guys have any other questions as it relates to design, feel free to like shout those out, put them in the comments. I can try to take photos um, or video of various aspects of the pool with some more detail. And hopefully that'll be um, clarifying for anybody who needs some more information. I'm sorry, I don't have better blueprints, but this is just kind of the process. And like I said, we changed a lot of things on the fly. And as we were building it, a lot of things just kind of, you know, we built as, uh, as we went, but, um, this is more or less the documents that we had. Uh, the most important one, actually, if you've gotten to this point in the video, good for you. This document right here, right here in the center, I'm going to hold it up. This was the hardest document to actually get a hold of and find. So, uh, this document gives you the accurate dimensions of the pool, including the frame, which is something that's hard to get your hands on. I think I found this on a third party site um, under their like product images. This was included somewhere. This is not in uh, the official like Intex setup guide or documentation as far as I can tell. I'm not really sure who even created this document, um, but this gives you the exact dimensions, including the frame, which is really important for knowing exactly where to build 
uh, the, you know, the deck and the frame and the housing and all that kind of stuff. Without this document, we honestly could not have built the pool. Now, this is specific to the model that we have. This is the like, you know, nine by 18 foot model or whatever it is. Um, I'm sure that this document exists. I'm, I'm guessing it would exist for the bigger pools as well. Hopefully it does. But this document, uh, I have scanned this in. I will provide a link to this if you're going to do the smaller pool. I'll look around online, see if I can find the ones for the bigger pools. But um, this is super, super, super helpful and mission critical. Like we could not have done this project without this document. So uh, whoever put this out, thank you so much. It made everything possible.